The NFL draft is over. AFC, we're talking to y'all today. Where do you rank in terms of grades? Who did well? Who didn't? Winners, losers? We'll discuss all of that next on the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. You are Locked On NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Locked On family? Welcome back to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, your daily podcast covering your favorite draft prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your boy, Damian Parson, always on the ones and twos. You know where you can find me on Twitter at DP underscore NFL. I'm a national scout with the Draft Network and your favorite and local running back guru. And as always, to talk draft prospects, college ball, NFL draft, Championship rings, my boy Keith Sanchez, Mr. LSU himself. You can find him on Twitter at the Talent Code. Keith, talk to him, baby. What's up, Locked On family? This is Keith Sanchez, senior draft analyst with the Draft Network, man, in 2019 national champ. Yes, champ talk. But DP, you know why we're here, man? You're here to bring championship level content surrounding the NFL draft, whether that's prospects, whether that's rankings, whether that's philosophies, whether that's team building. But you know what we have, DP? We post-draft, baby. We're post-draft, so we have to hand out draft grades. Yeah, we sitting there. We have the pen. We have the paper. We handing out the grades. GMs, we're calling you out. If you had a bad draft, if you had a good draft, we're going to give you your credit also. But DP, man, look, we're going to go to the AFC South. You want to know why? Because they had it, rookie quarterbacks. They drafted the quarterbacks, man. And we're going to look at the rest of their draft. There were some explosive things that came from the Houston Texans. So we're going to get into that. But first, we have a title sponsor. So let's head into our title sponsor. Then we're getting into that AFC South. Yes, sir. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of the NFL. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started. Keith? The Houston Texans, talk to me. How you feeling about them? H Town. Hey, how I feel about them? I'm giving them a A plus. Plus, yes, an A plus plus, man. They killed it, man. <laughs> you started off, you get Will Anderson. Everybody's wondering, okay, do we have to get Will Anderson or do we get CJ Straw, right? We do both of them. They did, they say both of them. I want both of them, man. And then <laughs> they continue to kill it throughout the rest of the draft. So my favorite pick, man, is gonna be Will Anderson. I think, like I keep saying, man, this guy's a difference maker, culture changer. Um, and then most questionable pick. I don't have any question marks about that. I'll probably go Juice Scruggs um, because they do need a center and going him in the second round. I think he's a good player, but I think they could have probably been a little bit more aggressive. That that was 10 picks behind John, Mike, John Michael Schmitz, which is the best interior offensive lineman, in my opinion, in this draft. So favorite pick is Will Anderson. They followed it up with most questionable pick, Juice Scruggs. I give them an A++. Yeah, I, I give him an A++ as well, Keith. Getting C.J. Stroud and trading back up to three to get Will Anderson Jr., that's a combo package in itself that should make any draft class uh, an A, in my opinion. But I think my favorite pick is going on the third round and getting Tank Dell, getting a, 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 a ball, a, a winner, Keith, a, a route winner, a guy that can separate for C.J. Stroud and add more talent to this wide receiver room. Um, and I think for – in terms of – I, I, I got to watch Juice Scruggs. I don't know too much about him. I, that's one guy I, I didn't get a chance to watch. So I would say probably him will be the questionable pick. Like, like I said, get a little aggressive. Go get John Michael Schmitz. But shout out to uh, shout out, shout out to the Texans, man. A++. Yeah, there we go, man. And they killed it. Henry Toto, Dilla Horton. This is another Keith Sanchez. I talked about that on the, <laughs> AFC, the NFC podcast. This is a Keith Sanchez draft. This is what I would have done as a general manager, man. But listen, we're going to transition to those Tennessee Titans, man. They waited to the second round. They picked up Will Levis, right? They got Peter Skaronski in the first round. They needed offensive line help. Then they followed it up with Tajay Spears in the third, Josh Wiley in the fifth. So, man, you look at my favorite pick. My favorite pick is probably... Ah, it's tough, man, because I like Skaronski and Tajay Spears. I'm probably going to go uh, – I'm going Tajay Spears. I was about to say Peter Skaronski. That's my favorite pick. I'm going to go with the running back out of two-lane explosive guy. Definitely a complimentary piece to Derrick Henry. I really like what he can do. Um, and then the most questionable pick will probably be – the fact that they didn't address this wide receiver position, man, they drafted a tight end, but y'all, y'all, they need more playmakers on the outside. So my biggest question mark is why didn't y'all draft more wide receivers? It seemed like they just needed more capital overall to address a lot of holes that I believe is on this Tennessee team. So me looking at their grade, man, I, I probably give them a, 
a, a C plus. I think they did solid. They was able to pick up Will Levis. So I, I C plus, right? They did better than than average. Whatever the average is, they did a little better than that. Yeah, I think C plus is right on par. You know, I love the Skaronski pick, um, and then also in the second, in the sixth round, getting Jalen Duncan, Keith. I think this is you know, and, and when you look at Tajay Spears, but also the biggest, the, the elephant in the room, Will Levis. If they, if those three picks can hit. This draft class could look very, very good in their in their favor, man. But I think the questionable pick for me was was Josh Weil in the fifth round. Um, some people have called him a H back, full back. I'm like, wait a minute, if you draft him in the fifth round to do that, like let's not draft him at all. You know what I mean? Like I just don't understand the concept on part on you know, combined with what you said about not I they didn't draft a receiver until like Colton Dowell in like seventh round, who might not make the roster. So I don't really understand what they were doing. In that regard, but C plus C plus is, is is average. It's good. You know they they yeah, did yeah, solid. It's solid. It's solid. So man, look, we're gonna head to the Colts Nation, man. Coach Na- Colts Nation stand up. They went with the playmaker at quarterback. They went Anthony Richardson, right? The guy with all the potential. Then they followed it up with Julius Brents, Josh Downs, um, Blake Free Blake Freeland. I'm sorry. I'll go my favorite pick though, man. And my and if my favorite pick is kind of a sleeper pick. I've talked about him on this call. I mean on, on this uh this podcast, right? Darius Rush, the cornerback. I think this is a guy that can play, he can play man to man, he will control tribute um high level football player i really like him and then another sleeper pick i have is evan hall running back out of northwestern great complimentary piece for john jonathan taylor a question mark right will mallory because i don't know if he's going to beat out the tight ends they have now i i I, like i like him i think he's a solid football player but i don't think he's going to beat out the tight ends they have on the roster as of now so i give them looking at i give them an a i'm sorry i just wanted to finish that up don't give him an a plus i give him an a though i think it was a good draft Man, I, I actually ended up giving them an A as well. I was almost on that, that A+. plus For me, the, the best pick was, you know, my guy, A-Rich at four. Uh, you know, parent, no, best the best uh, combination, A-Rich, and I, and I love giving him Josh Downs to finish, uh, like kind of, you know, fill out this receiving room. All those big towers, now you got your chain mover and your slot receiver that can do a lot of things underneath and win after the catch. I absolutely love combining those two talents together, uh, hopefully for the next <laughs> – 10 years plus if, if everything works out, but they, they, they nailed this draft. I think Blake Freeland in the fourth, like I think it's solid value. I would have preferred them to go. I would like to see Darius Russian at that pick and break Blake Freeland in the fifth, you know, type of round uh, just because I, I have some concerns with his movement skills in terms of changing direction and everything. But um, especially if you're trying to fix the left tackle spot. But other than that, Keith, I, I think they absolutely hit a home run. I do agree with you on the Will Mallory is like, what, where are you going to play him? What's the plan here? I don't know um, uh, Miley Cox's contract, but maybe that could be setting Will Mallory up to take over after the contract. So, you know, that contract ends. But, um, you know, overall, they get an A, man. Yeah, okay, look, we're about to transition, head to those ja- Duval, right? Duval <laughs> County, man, those Jacksonville Jaguars. They went Anton Harrison in the first round, right? Britton Strange in the second. They went Tank Bigsby in the third. Ventrell Miller in the fourth. Tyler Lacey in the, with another fourth round pick. DP, I'm going to be honest, man. If you listen to the NFC episode, right? I like this draft class as much as I like the New Orleans Saints. And I gave the Saints a C. I don't really care for it, man. There's a lot of reaches um, and just players that just were not my guys. Um, so, if you ask me my favorite pick, DP, my favorite pick is Tanks Bigsby for sure because I think he's going to be a great complimentary piece to Trevor, Travis Etienne. I'm sorry, I'm the brothers at Florida too, so we're going to have to you know, kind of decipher through that, work through that. Uh, Travis Etienne, I think that's going to be a good complimentary piece. Then you talk about Ventrell Miller's – I got a lot of question marks, to be honest. Britton Strange <laughs> in the second round, Ventrell Miller in the fourth round. I could keep going. Antonio Johnson in the fifth. Yazir, I could – I can keep going, right? Parker Washington. Um, I'll settle on Ventrell Miller, man. That that's that's the that's the one, right? My that's my most questionable pick. Uh, so yeah, I, I, C minus, right? I, I don't think we even give out D grades. So C minus, they right on par with the New Orleans Saints for me. Yeah, I, I'm with you. C minus. I, I think the, the the pick that you know I, I really like the the Anton Harrison pick because that's a that's a big need for them, especially with Cam Robinson being suspended for some games this year due to the PED situation, losing Juwan Taylor. They needed a, a tackle that could start right away. And Anton Harrison, I think, has the tools for that. But, my, of course, my favorite pick, along with Anton Harrison, is my boy Tink Bigsby. Um, 
the, you know, just getting more more talent in that running back room, more physicality, a guy that, that does not mind running through the tackles, and you can kind of try and sh- transition uh, Travis Travis Etienne um, into more of an Alvin Kamara role back when they had Mark, you know, early, uh, early on in his career when they had Mark Ingram, Keith, just being a space player and a weapon for them. Um, I think that that bodes well. Britton Strange, uh, I, I think his, he has high upside, but this was a flat-out reach to me. Second round? No, I, I had him like day three, Keith. I had him like fourth round. Um, when I graded this young man, but he's got a lot of tools, athletic, physically gifted. But yeah, I just think that that's a it was a reach. So I give him what C minus as well. Yeah, I agree, man. I agree. Look, man, we, what they say, man, go west, young man, go west, young man. So we're <laughs> going west. We're going to the AFC West. Check out uh, the teams out there. We can talk about the Super Bowl champs. So man, coming up next, we're getting to the AFC West. See the winners, the losers, hand out draft grades for those four teams. Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Guys, all you have to do, listen, you can go to an app that's safe, secure, super easy to use. You get paid instantly. Great promotions every single day. That's what I love about FanDuel. There's no better place to bet on all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. So visit FanDuel dot com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars that's fanduel dot com slash locked on fanduel official sports betting partner of the nba let's go let's go out west keith let's, let's go, go out, out west, west. let's start with these kansas city chiefs man they went felix and in duke uzoma they went hometown kid with pick 31 they finish off the first round rasheed rice right wide receiver from smu then tackle from Oklahoma, Wanye Morris. Looking at the rest of the draft. So I would say my favorite pick. My favorite pick is I'm going to go Felix and Duke, their first round pick. This guy with a high upside. I had him on my, you know, my edge rankings. This is a guy I think is a can really turn into something special. We had the opportunity to, you know, talk to him, interview him, had good conversation with him. So plus level play, a lot of potential wrapped up inside of there. Most questionable pick, DP, has to be Rasheed Rice. This is a guy that kind of fell off the map right when we talk about the draft process didn't really run extremely fast in my opinion at the senior bowl at the senior bowl he was okay right we had separation concerns and if you wanted a bigger wide receiver bigger bite i think there were plenty more wide receivers out there so that's my questionable pick looking at the chiefs to be honest super bowl champs but i don't know if you want to draft man so i have to give you a, a, a c just a flat out c i think it was okay they didn't win they didn't lose they did decently yeah, I, I give him I give him a C plus. I like the Felix pick getting, you know, replacing Frank Clark. Uh I like the Wanya Morris pick, especially the upside of it. Juwan Taylor is gonna be left tackle. Um, you know, Andrew Wiley went to Washington to play right tackle. So you need someone that has the physical capabilities of playing that right tackle position. I think Wanya Morris can. Now, is he gonna start day one? Um, we're gonna see how camp goes for him, you know, you know, with, with rookie mini camps and everything. But I agree. The the the, the pick that kind of caught me was the Rasheed Rice pick um, just because in fact that, you know, Cedric Timmel was on the board. Um, you know, they were, they were, they were just better receivers. So I, I, I'm a, I agree with you. I give them a C plus. I think that's yeah, I C. agree. Yup. 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 So look, man, we about to transition into the bolts, man, the Los Angeles chargers, Justin Herbert, see if he can take that next step and not give up these 27 point leads. But look, they started off, they gave, they, they drafted Quentin Johnston, right? They went with Quentin Johnston, pair him with Keenan Allen. That is by far my favorite selection. I love that pairing. I think it's a great situation for Quentin. Most questionable pick when I look at it, uh, Tough. I'm going to say Dion Henley. Not that I question the player, but I hope that this isn't a, a Kenneth Murray situation again, right? Talking about an athletic guy that can move, but just instinctually um, not being able to play in the block. So I hope they figure that out to where those guys can complement each other. And maybe Dion Henley can be more of that run stopper and then let Kenneth Murray play it in space. So that would be my question mark is how is that going to fit? Because they're almost carbon copies as far as, you know, plus traits and then minus traits looking at the draft. But I, I give them a B, man. Tuli to a low pool. I really like that selection. Max, Mad Max, Mac Dugan from Two Cold University, man, TCU. Um, I, I like that situation, picking him up in the seventh round as a backup quarterback. So I give them a B. I actually like the draft. I thought it was solid. Yeah, I, I give him a I give him a B plus, um, Keith. I, I like what they've done for the most part, man. Like you said, Quentin Johnson. That's the that's my favorite pick by far. You know, what I mean, it, it just pairing him up with with with, with uh. With Justin Herbert was phenomenal. Getting Tuli, Tui Pelotu, a guy that can rush from the inside. I think their pass rush packages, Keith, are about to get real, 
real dice, get real spicy out there on the Los Angeles side of, uh, of things on the West Coast. Being able to kick him inside, Keith, uh, you know, in, in that probably three tech when you have, you know, uh, Bosa and then um, and then Khalil Mack on the edges, man, that's dangerous, Keith. Like I said, the the Diane Hanley pick uh, was definitely the one that I, while I love the player. I didn't like the fit, and I'm going to tell you why I didn't like the fit, mainly because this is a team that still ignores the defensive tackle spot. When you have athletic right. linebackers against teams that are willing to run the ball, you got to be able to keep those linebackers clean so they can scrape and get to the football. But I feel like they've made some really good progress in terms of, hey, Patrick Mahomes, our quarterback isn't going anywhere, and we're chasing you down, bro. Yeah, no, I I think that's the big thing, right, is that we have to be able to compete. We have to be able to contend. We made it to the playoffs, but it's about make, having the next step, and we can't let the Kansas City Chiefs just continue to dominate this, um, not only our division, but the entire conference. With DP, man, let's go to Vegas, baby, the high rollers. Let's go to those Las Vegas Raiders. Look at their draft. They started this thing off with getting Kyrie Wilson in the what, top 10 pick. He went pick number seven. Then they followed it up with Michael Mayer. They went – they went Alabama's Byron Young, right, to try to stop the run. They went Trey Tucker. I actually, man, I like the back end of the draft, right? You look at Ja'Cory and Bennett, Christopher Smith, Nesta J. Severo. I think they found really good value with those picks. I would say this, my favorite pick, ah, looking at it, I don't know. I'll go this, my favorite pick, and you know he's just a, a, one of my guys, right? Like how Dames has his dudes. This is just a cute guy. Christopher Smith, safety from Georgia. I think that's really good value, and it's crazy because I comped him to Carl Joseph right now. I think Raiders fan would be a lot better if they feel like they got Carl Joseph in the, in the fifth versus the first, right? But I think he's a player very similar to that. So that's my favorite pick. And then you look at the, the biggest question mark, DP, if I'm looking at their picks, for me – would probably be Trey Tucker in the third round because I think there were other players that you could have went after and could have sought after um, that I think are more Great. accomplished as far as just with a slot wide receiver. So I give them I, I give them a, a, a B minus. I think it was a, a decent draft. Yeah, I, I give them a B, Keith. I mean, you got a high octane, very toolsy guy in Tyree Wilson who can learn from a Max Crosby. And even though Chandler Jones isn't the guy he used to be, he's got a world of knowledge for a long body rusher. That he can, you know, in terms of being able to compare, like, listen, I know how you may feel standing up on the edge. Maybe he can help him develop as an actual edge rusher, similar to how he developed as a as a big body, long arm edge rusher. Getting Michael Mayer, just a steady Eddie at the tight end position. I, I really like that pick, Keith, as well. Um, I I think my favorite pick would probably be Tyree Wilson, just because of the the potential to where he can rush outside, you know, play the run. Rush inside for sure, and I would pair. I would literally put him beside Max Crosby on third downs, and just yeah. create all types of havoc for for blocking schemes. And I would say the the pick that kind of I, most questionable for me is Aiden O'Connell um, in the in round four. <laughs> like what in the world? Like you know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I he's a gamer. He's all those different adages that you could use. All the cliches. He's physically limited. Um, fourth round. Fourth round, absolutely not. They, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I can't do it. What was the grade you gave him? I gave him a B. I gave him a B. I think I said B, B plus because of the, the high, what they could get from their top guys. So, I, yeah, I give him a B plus. But that just, that, that Aiden O'Connell pick just doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> well, let's finish up, man, with Broncos country. Let's ride. Uh, we're going to go to Denver, man. We're going to Denver, look at the Broncos. They didn't have very many draft picks, man. They didn't have a first round, so they had a second, two-thirds, a sixth, and a seventh. So, you know, you got to hit, right? When you don't have a lot of quantity, you got to hit with quality. So they went second round, Marvin Mims, third round, Drew Sanders. Um, another third round pick, they went Riley Moss, sixth round, J.L. Skinner, seventh round, Alex Forsythe. So, man, you asked me my, my favorite pick. It's not... I'm tough. I'm almost torn. I, I, I would say this. The one with potential to blow up is the Drew Sanders, right? I think they put him at edge. I think he's in a perfect situation being a versatile linebacker. Um, they line him up on the edge. He can get some sack production. So I really like that one as a sneaky pick um, and a player with a lot of upside and production. So I'll go I'll go Drew Sanders. The, the question mark in this is Riley Moss so high. I think Riley Moss will be a good football player, um, but just I probably had more of a fourth, fifth round grade on him than a third round. I think they're probably going to kick him inside the safety. But that's the question mark. And it's honestly, they didn't have very many picks. I think they just got in there, did what they had to do. It wasn't a bad draft. So I'm somewhere in between a B minus and a C plus with them too. I think they were solid. 
No, I agree. I, I, I give him a B minus myself. You know, getting Marvin Mims. Uh, like I said, Drew, Marvin Mims, Drew Sands, my my favorite picks. I think the 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 Riley Moss pick. I think the the thing that makes it tough is just trading up for him, which I like Riley Moss. I think he could play zone corner. I think he's better being able to to eye backfield action and keep his eyes on the quarterback as he's dropping off to his landmarks and playing as much press man. And they played they played a lot more press man. Then what you know, I'm comfortable with Riley Moss, but overall, you know, getting Marvin Mims, I think this spells that KJ Hamler, somebody's getting traded. You know what I mean? I truly believe that that's that's what's about to happen. So, uh, I, I I give him a what I say B minus. Yeah, I give him a B minus. Uh, I think JL Skinner pick could be a sneaky one. Um, you know, uh, with, with Justin Simmons as like his mentor. Yeah, no, nah, I agree, man. So listen, DP, we went we went down south, man. We knocked out the AFC South. We knocked out the AFC West. Now we got to go to that black and blue division, man. They call it the AFC North. So we're going to knock out knock out the North and the East together, go rapid fire through some of these teams. Um, you know, we got the Baltimore Ravens, right? We have the New England Patriots. They continue to do Patriots type things, man. But we're going to give out a draft grades, Bill Belichick. We'll we'll see you when we see you, man. Uh, coming up next, man, we're going to hand out these draft grades for the AFC North and the AFC East. All right, Keith, the AFC North. Let's got. Let's get it. Let's get it, man. We we'll start with those Baltimore Ravens. I they did the Baltimore Raven thing. Take best player available. They can play football on film. Let's draft them. I draft grade. I give them an A, not an A plus, not an A minus, just a solid A. They went. My favorite pick is probably. I like a lot. They got good value for a lot of their picks, yeah. man. Um, I'm gonna go somebody fun. I'm gonna go Trenton Simpson in the third round. I think he's a guy to me, in my opinion. I had him as a top fifty football player. So Trenton Simpson in the third round. That's my favorite. Biggest question mark. I don't have any question marks, DP. To be completely honest with you, maybe. I, I don't I don't have any question marks. I I maybe I'll say this. Question is what are they gonna do with Tavis Robinson? Um if they're gonna stand him up as an edge rusher, put his hand in the ground. He's kind of a tweener, 6'6, 260, kind of more leaner. So I don't know what position he's gonna be. That's the only question mark, but he's still a good football player in my opinion. Yeah, Keith, I, I love their draft for the most part. Getting Zay, getting Trenton, Caillou Blue Kelly in the fifth is incredible value. Andrew Voorhees because of the 20 ACL in the seventh is incredible value. I gave him a B plus. I think the main questions I have um, is going to be where do you play Trenton Simpson and Tavius Robinson? Mostly Trenton Simpson. Um, you know, you don't really have a need for another safety. Uh, so it's like, okay, what's going to happen with Patrick Queen? Uh, you know, where's Trent, Trenton Simpson playing? What is he going to do for you? Because uh, that's going to be like, if you don't have a plan, that I feel like you can waste his talent, as we saw with one of his you know, former Clemson, you know, guys, you know, with Isaiah Simmons going over to Arizona, not having a plan can really derail a player's career. But I, I like the draft. I give him a B plus, Keith. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I like that. Look, let's go to the rivals, right? Well, everybody rivals in this division, right? Everybody beats up on each other, um, but, you know, they, they get after it. So we're going with the Pittsburgh Steelers, man, looking at their draft. They started this thing off with Broderick Jones, my OT1. I think he's the best offensive tackle in this draft. They went Joey Porter in the second round, right? Storybook, conversation, Keanu Bitten, Darnell Washington, Nick Herbert. I would say this, man, my favorite pick. I'm going to go with the first one. I think Broderick Jones is that type of guy. I think he, he's a difference maker. He's what they need because they need a – like the Pittsburgh still is a soft along the offensive line. He's a difference maker. He's not soft. He's going to elevate other people. You ask me my biggest question mark, maybe just to help the Darnell Washington, right, draft. He fell to the third round, so I thought it was good value, but everybody talked about, you know, there was medicals involved in Darnell Washington. So that's my only question mark. It's not the player. It's more so the health. Make sure he stays healthy. You did all your, you know – I guess dotted your eyes and cross your T's as far as with Darnell Washington, but I like the draft. I give it, I give it an A minus. I thought it was a solid draft. Yeah, kid. I, I also gave it an A minus. Um, you know, I, I love what they what they did. I think my favorite pick probably, you know, I'm actually gonna go Darnell in terms of what the value is. And, and you talked about just kind of the being a little more softer on the offensive line. I think there's a team that wants to get back to being dominate on the ground and running the ball with Najee Harris and give Kenny. Pick it to play the play the uh, play action and stuff like that. I think Darnell Washington out, operating as like a sixth offensive lineman. He's probably the same size as some of their offensive tackles, man. So I think like that 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 is incredible value. And I gotta give a shot in terms of another value is getting Nick Herbig, um, you know, out of Wisconsin linebacker edge hybrid to where your sub packages you can you know you can rush him off the edge, probably blitz him up the a gap. Him, you know, paired with Alec Highsmith and then T.J. Watt, man, I, I give him my A-. They did a great job. 
Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. Look, we're going to Cleveland, man. Cleveland Browns, uh, you know, see the state of that franchise, right? We know it's been a lot of, you know, I guess distractions around there, but they get to roll in full year. Uh, Deshaun Watson on deck and, you know, he's really just filling out the rest of this roster and they're a very talented roster, but obviously they need, you know, to fill out some holes. I mean, I'm looking at it. They didn't have a first round pick, didn't have a second round pick. So they had to wait to the third round. They got Cedric Tillman in the third round. Then they followed that up with Siaka Ika. Um, then they went DeWan Jones offense of tackle Isaiah McGuire in the fourth round Dorian Thompson Robinson dual threat quarterback in the fifth round when I look at it DP they address positional needs I don't know if I love the draft so I'm gonna go I'm stuck in between C plus and B minus for them if you're asking my favorite pick I'll say this I think Cedric Tillman is really going to have an opportunity to shine but Cameron Mitchell the cornerback from Northwestern that's another sneaky pick for them that's a really good situation biggest question mark Dewan Jones, I, and that's just because I, I question Dewan Jones, just period. And I, I hate to put it like that, but just there were some question marks as far as just what he's going to contribute to a team. And then he fell for a reason, right? I, so I, I would say that's my biggest question mark. But like I said, somewhere in between a C plus for a B minus for the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, I, I ended up giving them like a B plus when I graded them, Keith. I, I like a lot of the, the the picks that they made in terms of value. Like you said, getting Cedric Tillman, man, that's big. Getting another big body guy who can uh, win on the outside, and then now they let you move Elijah Moore and and Mark Cooper inside when you really want to go to eleven personnel and really create mismatch issues, especially when you also have a David and Joe who's an athletic tight end. Getting Siaki Ika, they signed Dalvin Tom Tomlinson in, in free agency. Getting Siaki Ika, man, it helps. You know in the, on the interior with the run defense is big, hey, Keith. And then I like really like the Isaiah McGuire and Cam Mitchell picks as well. Um, but I agree, biggest the biggest question mark is Dewan Jones, mainly because there's, there's reports about his his motor and what he wants, you know, in the in the draft process. And you know what I'm saying? So if you can get a motivated, you you get day one a senior bowl, Dewan Jones, where nobody can get around him and he's playing for you know for his livelihood. This is a home run. But if you get a guy that they said refused to work out at the combine and at his pro day, then, yeah, that's probably going to be a problem. Yeah. So, man, look, we're about to go to finish out this AFC North, man, with the Cincinnati Bengals, the who they Bengals. Right. So we're looking at it. They went Miles Murphy in the first round. Edge rusher picked them up at pick 28. Um, round two, right? They went DJ Turner. Round three, they went Jordan Battle. Round four, they went Charles Jones, Charlie Jones. I'm sorry. So looking at it, I I, I like it. Those first three picks, the Miles Murphy, the DJ Turner, Jordan Battle. That's that's Keats guys. Like I'm looking at this draft. I, I think they could have finished it out the back end a little bit better. Um, but I'll still say this. I I I give them. A B. I think it was a it was a solid draft. They, I, I really like those first three picks. I think those are starters. Those are guys that's going to keep them in contention for playoff runs and you know just you know rookie contracts things like that as they have to play pay other players like Joe Burrow and Jamal Chase. So I give it a B, man. My favorite pick. Um, I'm gonna go with my guy. I, I, all three of them are my favorites, like Miles Murphy, DJ Turner, Jordan Battle. But little sleeper guy, Jordan Battle, man, I, I, I really like that player. Nobody talked about him very much. Um, question mark, maybe Chase Brown, because I, I, I just didn't love what he brought, right? But I, I, I can see the role fit with them losing P. Ryan and everything. So I'll, I'll go I'll go Chase Brown. But B, B draft, I think it was solid. I think what I gave them, it was a, I gave them a B plus. I, you know, look, the first three picks were really, really good that I really love. DJ Turner, you know, that's one, you know, I've talked about it since the summer kid. I love that kid and his game. The next three picks, I actually liked more than I thought I were going, I was going to get into Charlie Jones. T Higgins, I, I don't believe T Higgins, T Higgins is going to be there. I know that, that Joe Burrow wants him to stay. I think T Higgins is going to get that. He wants that top tier wide receiver one money because that's how he should view himself. And getting Charlie Jones, who and same thing with, with Tyler Boyd. I think Charlie Jones can replace Tyler Boyd eventually in the slot, you know what I mean, and be that kind of slot machine for Joe Burrow. But getting Chase Brown, if they if they are going to cut a Joe Mixon, I think this is good value for a running back that fits your scheme. But I think good, really good value for a developmental guy. I would pay. I would literally put him right beside Chase. Uh, you know, uh, Jamar Chase is Andre Yisovas, Keith, uh, Olympic athlete. Olympic caliber athlete, big, physical, explosive guy, straight line speed that Princeton didn't run a traditional 
football program where he didn't do traditional football things in practice. I think that there's some good upside there for him as kind of an outside big body threat. So I gave him a B plus because those defensive um, moves early address some key needs. I think they did a good job. Yeah, they did. They, that's why I said I gave him a B. I think it was a really solid draft, man. But look, we got to go to the AFC East. And you know what we starting off with? We starting off with the New England Patriots. We just go ahead, get it over with, right? And when you look at the draft, DP, it, it's not so much that I, I dislike the players more than the redundancy of more interior offensive linemen, you know, and things like that. So when I look at it, um, you you see you see Christian Gonzalez in the first round, which I really like. That was cornerback one for me. Keon White, versatile defensive end edge rusher how many times have we said that about a player that the Patriots have drafted uh favorite pick looking at it dp i'm, I'm gonna have to go with christian gonzalez that's my favorite pick man i've I, man to man corner i really like what he does um question mark my question mark is third round marte my pool i know they like versatile players i just don't know where he plays like he's just a guy that i feel like is going to be very hard to put on the field in multiple situations i think he's very specific uh looking at the patriots draft i i give them a a C plus because I still don't think they addressed the wide receiver position like they needed to. Yeah, I gave him a C minus Keith, and I almost gave him a D. I was very Damn. close. Um, <laughs> the, 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 the first two picks, you know, Christian Gonzalez and Keon White, those is what those are the picks that saved this draft for me, man. You had three fourth round picks, and you went Jake Andrews, an undersized center out of Troy, Chad Rowland, who was, was the kicker out of Maryland, who was absolutely terrible at the Senior Bowl, and then City Sal. Uh, guard from Eastern Michigan. I love the pickup of Antonio Maffi, and I really like the value of Keishon Boutte and Demario Douglas. That helped it as well. But I'm just sitting there like, when, in your premium areas, what were you doing? What was the plan here? You yeah, know, you I went agree. like three or four interior offensive line. Ah, God, no. This is C minus. What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, let's uh let's go to South Beach, man. We get out of New England, we go somewhere a little bit more happier, right? We got palm trees, got a lot of things <laughs> going on down there. So let's go to South Beach with the Miami Dolphins. They didn't have very much draft capital. We know they lost their first round pick, uh tampering for the Tom Brady that they did not get. Uh so I, I don't I don't I don't understand that part. Uh but look, they went Cam Smith in the second round cornerback, they went Devon H and Running back, they went Elijah Higgins in the sixth round, and then they went in the seventh round, Ryan Hayes. So it's not very much to evaluate. Uh, favorite pick, Cam Smith, right? The second round pick, I think, is a man to man corner. They have three dogs now, right? They go Xavier Howard, yeah. they go Jalen Ramsey, they go Cam Smith. They're going to be locked and loaded, ready to cover some guys. So that's my favorite pick. Most questionable pick, I would have to say Devon H. in the third round. I thought a guy like Israel Bandicanda, who fell in the New York Jets, picked him up. Sammy's that kind of offensive situation, uh, you know, zone type things. I think they could have got H. Chan a little bit later. I get it. He's probably the fastest running back. But I don't always see that play speed with, with Devon H. Chan, and I just think there was a value other places. So that was my most questionable pick. Um, you asked me to grade their draft. Psst. C plus. I think it was it was it was decent. Like there's not many picks. There's only four, so it's hard to really get into the weeds, right? Because they they miss a first round pick and then the entire middle part. When we talking about fourth and fifth rounders, they didn't have that either. So I give them a C plus. I know giving them like a B minus. I really love the Cam Smith pick, Keith, and um, I, I think Elijah Higgins brings a, some good value to him as a wide receiver, tight end hybrid. Losing Mike Asecki, I think he kind of step into that role a little bit. I agree with you. Devin A. Chan, while I like the I like the pick and I like the fit, I feel like it was a little early, especially after I think they just signed and paid one of those running backs, those veteran fast running backs that they have that came from San Fran with Mike McDaniel. So um, I, I give them a B minus. Uh, you know, Cam Smith and Elijah Higgins were two of my favorite picks. I mean, because what they could bring to this team. Yeah, all right. Look, man, let's let's we gotta go back up north, DP. We gotta go back up to Buffalo, baby. Bills Nation, Josh Allen. Uh did they take a step forward? Uh looking at this draft, man. They had what one, two, three, four, five. They had six picks, man. First round, they got Don Kincaid tight end out of Utah. Second round, they went Osiris Torrance from Florida. Third round, they went linebacker from Tulane. Uh so looking at this draft, DP, I, I'm starting my grade first. I, I thought this was a C. I thought this was a very average, like, I just, I, I didn't love it, man. I didn't love it. I didn't love the value of where they drafted players at. Oh, you asked me my favorite pick? 
Probably the seventh round pick, Alex Olsen. I think this is a guy that, that's called a play. I think he's going to play. I think that was the best value per player type situation. So you you, you give me Alex Austin in the seventh round, a guy that I had like a fifth round grade on um, that I think can play football. I think he he will probably make this roster uh, most questionable pick. I question the fact that they didn't address the wide receiver position and then they were addressed it with Justin Shorter. And you would think that it, I, I'm just, let's see, I'm not going to kill one way or the other. Right? I'm going to just say this, man. I thought they should have did more to address the wide receiver position. And I'm going to leave it like that. Paul, being being uh, a politician, I like it. I like politically it. Politically correct. Politically correct. I gave them, let's see, the Buffalo Bill. I gave them a C plus. Um, I love the first two picks, the Dalton Kincaid. Well, sorry, Stone was was Kincaid an actual need? I mean, if you were gonna up, if you weren't gonna pay your current tight end, yes, but they already paid the current tight end. So it's just like Dalton Kincaid is probably gonna be their flex option. Um, and, and I and I love you know he's my tight end one man. Uh, Osiris Torrance, you know I spent some time with him in Mobile and got the chance to you know really watch him up close and personal. And I love how he performed down in Mobile as well. And he's gonna bring Keith. We you know we talked about running the football. They need to get better with that. They got they got stronger. They got nastier. They got more physical with the addition of Osiris Torrance. Um, and like you said, Alex Austin. The the two picks I feel like that I don't really rock with was the third round pick. This the reach of Dorian Williams, uh, linebacker out of Tulane, and then getting Justin Shorter. Uh, there, I think there was better receivers on, on the board. And with Dorian Williams, uh, I feel like instinctually he's he's got a lot of room to grow. And he's, you know what I'm saying? So it's like trying to re- have him replace Tremaine Edmonds. That's that's tough, man. Um, I, I, that's that's really tough. So I, I give him a, let's say a C plus. Okay. Yeah. I, I, not, I would give him C, C minus. I, I, it was, it was okay. like, yeah. Uh, very blah type of draft. I don't know right. if they got better through the draft. Um, so look, I'm gonna we'll be finishing off with the J E T S Jets 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 man. Finish them off. They all uh, from from the very beginning. They they did Jets type things, man. They went edge rusher, um, Will McDonald from Iowa State. Then they followed it up with the center Joe Tipman. Uh, fourth round they went Carter Warren. Fifth round they went Israel Bandicanda. Looking at this draft DP, and I, I I get glimpses of it. I check it out. C. See, I, and I'm going to be from the very beginning. We know when Will McDonald was drafted, right? I, I thought that was a reach. Um, I see the potential, but you have developmental guys in Michael Clemens and Jermaine Johnson. So I didn't understand, are, are we done with those guys already after one year? What's going on, right? So um, I, that one is probably my most questionable. The pick that I love the most, or I think made the most sense, was the Israel Bandicana. I think he's going to be able to tote the rock in this scheme. Um, we know that Brees Hall, everybody was excited about what he was able to do, but he's coming off a torn ACL. You still have to be able to run the football. He's an explosive guy. So that that's a sleeper pick that I, I like. You know, if we talk at fantasy stuff, I'm telling people, like, hey, stash that guy, you know, throw him, you know, throw him to the side, stuff like that. Like I said, I give them a C. Um, Israel Bandit Cannon, my favorite pick. And then you talk about the most questionable pick was just being aggressive and getting Will McDonald at, at pick 15. Yeah, kid, I give I ended up giving them a C plus. Um, you know, I was a little higher on Will McDonald than you. I wasn't this high on Will McDonald, but I do like the player and his potential. My favorite pick, Joe Tipman. That's my guy. Uh, he's very much rivaled John Michael Schmitz for uh center one in uh, you know this entire process for me. Carter Warren, Toolsy. Athletic kind of you know tackle. I feel like that was a maybe you could have got him in the fifth. Uh, so that pick was probably the like that and Will McDonald were like the the true reaches to me um, yeah. for this for this class. I do like the value of getting Zach Coons, a big athletic tight end that you can get him in the weight program, get him a little more functionally sh- uh, stronger to uh, to to run block. But uh, you know I think he could be something. Well, Aaron Rodgers doesn't target the tight end, so never mind. Forget I said anything about Zach Coons. But uh, <laughs> overall, I think they did a solid job. Just, you know, good players, just weird spots in terms of where they reach for players. Yeah, I agree, man. Look, that wraps up the AFC, right? We, we went through. We graded everybody. I think we were, we were pretty fair, right? Like we, I think so. We, we called out the people that needed to be called out, right? Like there were some teams that I think got better, some teams that stayed the same. And if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. That's why I'm like, so there is no That's- stay the same in that sense. So, man, I, I it'll be interesting to see how some of these rookies um transition into the NFL, how they're able to help their team. And not look, coming up, like in the next couple episodes, we're going to talk about, 
the the fits right because we always talked about his philosophies it's about fits and where yeah. these guys go so we're going to go through these first rounders and talk about like hey where do they fit in the coming episodes um like we said man locked on nfl draft this is more draft is 24 7 365 it doesn't stop so man we're always going to be able to talk about philosophy roster management prospects everything going in uh so man y'all make sure to stay locked in with us this is not just the nfl draft and it's over this thing goes 24 7 365 not 100 percent guys we appreciate you guys and we like we always tell you go subscribe and follow for free on youtube or wherever you listen to podcasts to get the latest episode as soon as it's available thank y'all for making locked on nfl draft your first listen today and every day monday through friday you every day as we appreciate y'all we love you uh you are family uh like keith just kind of told you we got some we, we talking fits for a lot of these guys starting with quarterbacks tomorrow we're looking at the top five qbs and how they fit with their teams and not only just a fit but who in the best situation, especially in year one. So for Twitter, for Keith Sanchez, you can find him on Twitter at the Talent Code. I'm Damian Parson, DP underscore NFL. Come and join the conversation again tomorrow on the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day.